Good afternoon, good evening. Um, this is Rwani. I'm from 10 times a better generation school ministries. Uh, I'm your teacher. Uh, the ministry is headed by Senior Pastor Budeni. We're here to continue in uh, wrapping up the believer's true identity. Uh, we will start where we ended last week. And uh, as usual, our ministry is to equip the saints. That way, in the year 2021, we continue to move from success to significance. Uh, we are wrapping up the sessions uh, for the true identity of the believer. So this will be the second last one and we wrap up next week. Um, we'll start off in Psalms chapter 115 and then wrap up from there. So remember, we are moving from success to significance. I hope you are keeping well. I hope you had a good rest all over this uh, longish weekend. Uh, Psalms 115 verse 14 reads, May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of the heaven and the earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind. Um, we acknowledge and we, 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 we even made a confession that you are, Oh, you have been caused to flourish. You and your children. Um, the person who's made you to flourish is the maker of the heavens and the earth. That is the Lord. And be rest assured that you are flourishing and you are to flourish. You be rest assured that your place is nowhere else but to flourish and to enjoy the crop of this land and to enjoy that which God has prepared for you here on earth and enjoy the things that you will call to be by your own mouth because you are continuing with creation where God has left it off. 16 reads that the highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind. If the highest heavens belong to the Lord and uh, the earth he has given to us, it means that uh, here on earth, effectively, we are God's and we continue with creation where God has left it off. Why? Because we are believing and we are speaking spirits. So in the image and the likeness of God as we have been made to continue with creation, to lord over the earth, we call things to be. We don't call things as uh, if they will be as a matter of time. We call things to be because we are creators. We, we, we are believing and speaking spirits made in the image and the likeness of God, right? Huh? We breathe life to things and things, they take the life of us. Because we are life-giving spirits. It says that we are co-heirs with Christ. So how, how is that representation there? How is it working out? Christ is in heaven, right? Representing us in heaven. When God sees Christ, he sees us. God does not see us for what we are. He sees us through Christ. And Christ is representing us there in heaven. Then I believe, since Christ is not here on earth, it is our place to represent Christ here on earth. The Bible says in uh, the previous ones that we have read that uh, we are called here to do good works. And if you're called to do good works, it means that you call things to be. You do good works here on earth. You imitate God the Father, as Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 says, Beloved children, be therefore imitators of God the Father, God the believing and speaking Spirit, God that speaks things to be. So if you are there, then imitating God the Father, a believing and speaking Spirit, doing good works as Christ has done, and you're continuing with the Christ walk here on earth, it means that effectively then, the things you call, they will be. The people that see you, they should seek. Christ through you, then your conduct has to be that uh, similar or the same with that of Christ, because in the same image and the likeness we have been made, that we flourish, that we do good works here on this earth. I remember last week we made mention that uh, we've been given dominion here on earth, that it is our place to exercise dominion here on earth. And in exercising dominion, it means we must be in a position to, to rule over our lives. To speak life into our lives. To speak life into the lives of our children. For those who are guardians and parents. 
because uh, ultimately and effectively we are gods and it also goes back to the way uh, parents and guardians you ought to raise your children you need to raise them like they are supposed to be you need to raise them like gods here on earth I, I, I was listening to to Kanye West just recently he was in interview uh, they asked him um, Kanye who, who do you say you are? He said, I'm a god. And people do not get it. They don't need to get it. As long as you understand your true identity. That in the image and the likeness of God, if you've been created, then you are like God, you're a god. And what does God do? He speaks things. He calls them to be. And they be. He said, in the beginning, let there be light. <laughs> The instant he said, let there be light, there was light. He said, let there be day and night. Instantly it was done. What does that mean for me and you? It means that the instant you call something, the instant you ask for something, the instant you say something, because that's your true identity, you are like God. It is done. Physical manifestation may linger around, it may tear, it might take its time. But the order is what is more real is what is spiritual because before it is physical, it is spiritual first and the spirituality of things is that which the orchestrates the physicality of things. So one man I know also says this, is a professor, is like the instant you open your mouth and you say the words, the damage is already done. So be careful, be mindful of what you're saying. Because boy, oh boy, you are a god. And the instant really you say something, it is done. It's just a matter of physical manifestation. Um, it might either happen immediately or whenever. It goes time. We don't know when. But it will happen. So it's, 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 it's not a matter of if it happens. It's a matter of acknowledging that when you say something, it will happen. It's not a matter of if anymore. It's a matter of when. Hallelujah. Yes, you listening, speaking right now, when you say it to be, it's a matter of when it will happen. That's it. That's the long and short. That's the believing and speaking spirit made in the image and the expressed likeness of God. To be like God, to imitate God the Father, a believing and speaking spirit. Represent Christ here on earth. Let people repent. Let people change. Let people see God through you. Let people see Christ through you because he lives and abides in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It also says that you are the temple of the Lord. And hence, when people see you, they need to see God. They need to see Christ because he resides in you. You are the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's make a quick confession before we move on to the next ones. Um, you repeat after me. I flourish. Both me and my children. We flourish. Because we have been blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He has blessed our Lord. That's why we flourish. The highest heavens, they belong to the Lord. But the earth, he has given to me. And here on earth, I will flourish. I will rule. I will have dominion. I will exercise my authority because the Lord has given me the earth and I will exercise heavenly dominion here on earth. And as the will of God is forever established in heaven, I will establish the will of God here on earth. I will call things to be and they will be. Not if they will be. They will obey the sound of my voice because I've been created with authority and I have the authority of God. Hence I call things to be. Yeah? Let's move on. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1. 
I'll read it out for you. Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. It does not say set your heart on things. It says set your heart on things above. It's not just things, it's things above. Where Christ is, where Christ is sitting from a position of victory, from a position of dominion, from a position of exercising authority. That's where you set your, 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 your heart. You don't set your heart on problems because problems, they are temporary. They are passing away. You don't set your heart on challenges. You don't set your heart on sickness. You don't set your heart on inabilities or limitations or hurdles that you're going through. You set your heart on things above because above we have all uh, problems, issues, sicknesses, diseases, solved, healed, you name it, whatever. In Jesus' mighty name. That is your true identity. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. That is what verses 2 says. So earthly things, they are subject to change. But when you set your mind on heavenly things, the heavenly things, they change the earthly things. Because what is heavenly is most superior and what is heavenly comes with the will of God. It is forever established in heaven. So that means we take that which God has used to exercise dominion and make sure all things are perfected in heaven and we use it to perfect our lives here on earth. Huh? So, verse 3. For you died and your life is now hidden in Christ. It is now hidden in God. What does that mean? You are like God here like we keep on saying. When people see you, they should see Christ because your life is hidden in Christ. Your life is not hidden in you. Suffering is not hidden in you. Struggling is not hidden in you and your inabilities and your limitations and the things that you're failing. No! Your life is hidden in Christ and let people see Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we know that nothing is impossible with Christ. Nothing is impossible with God. Acknowledge this. I will remind you now. It says here that we have been raised with Christ. How are we raised with Christ if we do not die with Him? Let's take it back. If you're raised with Christ, it means that you carry the cross with Christ. Effectively, you don't have to carry the cross again because you've carried it with Christ. Through Christ, you are crucified with Christ. You don't have to be crucified again. Not by sickness, not by disease, not by problems, not by the difficulties of life. It continues further. It says that then, if we carry the cross with him, crucified with him, then like the word is saying here in verses 3 of Colossians uh, 3, 1, then we have also died with Christ. What does that mean? When he went to the lower parts of the earth and defeated sin, nature and death, we did so with him. We have defeated death through Christ, right? And then, it continues further, then it means if we died with him, when he resurrected, we were raised with Christ. Hey, so we don't have to die for sin anymore. We acknowledge that the finished work of Christ, it is ours, because we are co-heirs with Christ. As Christ is, then so are we. You don't have to suffer anymore here on earth. You don't have to suffer of sickness, disease, lack, Poverty, you name it, whatever you're going through. Christ has defeated all of that once for and for all. And his victory, it is yours. It is sure. It is guaranteed. And what more when you mind the things of God? When you set your mind on things above? When you take care of the business of God? When you study your word? When you pray? And when you take all things and you cast them all to God? God says that I am mindful of you. And I will take care of you. Just like I clothe the birds and feed the grass. What more will I do for you? My dearly beloved children. Remember. You are made in the image and the likeness of God. And what you leave here. 
should exhume and show the life of Christ in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, nothing is impossible with God. Christ in you. Mm-hmm. Boy, oh boy. Let's wrap up, right? Um, so then, since your life is hidden in Christ, so you ought to also reveal Christ here on earth. It's not based on your conduct. It's not how you're living your life. No. It is essentially your true identity. You ought to reveal Christ here on earth. That's what you were called to do. And that way, they will know Christ through you, through your works. Because the Bible says we are called to do good works. Go on and do your good works. Don't be selfish. Remember, you're living for God, not for yourself. But for who? For God. So, let us take cognizance of who we essentially are. We are made in the image and the likeness of God. And we'll exercise the dominion and the authority of God here on this earth. Let's make our quick confession, last confession as we wrap up. You repeat after me as you have done initially. My life is hidden in Christ. And when people see me, when the world sees me, let them see Christ. Because that's my true identity. Not my shortfalls. Not my shortcomings. Because Christ, he has fulfilled the law for me. And as Christ is, then I am. I have world overcoming faith. In my life I reign, I rule. And I dominate. I am made in the image and the likeness of God. I am like God here on earth. I am a God. That is my true identity. And I send out the word of God. And I achieve the word. And I achieve the results of the word. God always fulfills Christ in me the hope of glory hallelujah let's wrap up this topic next week like we say subscribe hit the bell icon notification so that you are updated whenever we make a new upload care to share the message don't be greedy this is the message for sharing to equip the saints let us move forward in 2021 from success to significance. Be even more blessed. Hallelujah. Amen.